welcome to another episode of Growing for Good with Funding for Good. Today we are talking about flying and fundraising. And I'm going to start for a second and tell you about the flying part, and then we're going to get into how it relates to fundraising. I want you to picture um, about, let's see, how many years ago is that? Nine, eight, about eight years ago, maybe nine, when Sudoku puzzles first came out and were really big and popular. My brother gave me a book of Sudoku puzzles for Christmas that year and at the time I worked for a group home, a group home for teenage boys and when I worked there I lived there for a week and I was off for a week. So when I lived there I had a room, I had a bathroom all to myself and there was another guy that worked with me and then the kids had their own rooms and bathrooms as well. Well in the evenings we would do Sudoku puzzles while the kids were getting ready for bed and while everybody was calming down for the evening and I don't know if you've ever done Sudoku puzzles but for me they are extremely mentally exhausting. <laughs> and so I would spend a lot of time on those, but then because I was so mentally exhausted when I got ready to go to bed, I would sleep really hard. And when I sleep really hard, I don't know if you're the same, but I can get up in the middle of the night, say to go to the bathroom or whatever, and I basically am still asleep. My body will function to allow me to do it, but then I go back to bed and it's like I never woke up. Well. It was one of those types of nights, I had been working on Sudoku puzzles, and the way that my bedroom was set up at that time, my bed was directly in front of the door for the bathroom. So I would just hop out of bed, go straight to the bathroom, and then come right back to bed. And it was a queen size bed, so for one person, there's a lot of space there. For some reason, and I don't know what the reason was, in the middle of the night, that particular evening, my brain decided to think that it would be a good idea to do one of those moves like you see in the movies sometimes where you take a little run and go and you do a Superman onto the bed. You know, just woo onto the bed. I have no idea why. It's not like that's something I do on a regular basis. And the bed was low. It was, it was just on one of those metal frames. It wasn't a, a tall bed, so it was really possible to do that. Well, I did get a little bit of a run and go. Not that there was that much distance to get a run and go to do it, but got a little run and go and I took off to fly through the air and land on my bed. But in the dark, and because I was basically asleep, I completely missed the bed. I went over the corner of the bed, and the only thing I touched was the ground. I took a nice little leap in the air and completely landed face first on the carpet, very hard. That's when I realized that phrase people always say, when people get drunk, they don't get injured as badly when they're in car wrecks because they don't tense up, because their body is not expecting the impact, right? I never understood that concept until that evening, because when I made impact, I wasn't expecting it. My body was not prepared for that, and I didn't hurt myself, except for the rug burn and rug rush that I had all over the side of my face from sliding on the carpet. Um, didn't wake anybody in the house up, kind of woke up myself, kind of crying a little bit, kind of laughing a little bit, because I knew what I had done, and it was hysterical to me, um, even though there wasn't anyone there to watch it. It was a complete failure. My body and mind's ability to, to try to think that I could fly was just wrong. And I learned that the hard way. Well, I was thinking the other day while I was driving because occasionally I'll think about that story and it makes me laugh. So I'm, I can make myself laugh when I'm driving down the street, but I started thinking about fundraising. And I'm like, you know, that is sort of just like fundraising. Sometimes you just have to try something to see if it'll work before you realize that it will or won't. Not everything you try is gonna work. Over the course of time, you're gonna learn things that you did that you could have done better, that you should have done that you didn't do, that you shouldn't have done that you tried. But you're never gonna know if you don't try. Now, the rational, intelligent side of me, had I been fully awake, probably could have talked myself out of that Superman attempt, or I could have done it and actually landed on the bed. But that's not what happened. And I can honestly say, I was talking to my mom about this the other day, I can honestly say that I still have moments at night when I've gotten up to go get water or go to the bathroom or check on something or whatever, and I'm still pretty much asleep. I will still remember I shouldn't try to do a Superman on the bed because it had such an impact on me physically and mentally. Um, I have a lot of experiences in the fundraising world where I have learned maybe I shouldn't have done something I did and I don't do it again or I modify the way I do it the next time. But I've also learned that the people have told me, you shouldn't do that because it won't work. And I've tried it and it has worked. For example, I remember once going to a potential donor who had never given to an organization I was working with. I took a friend of theirs and I made an ask 
for what seemed reasonable for that person based on their friend, based on what we were raising money for, and based on this individual's ability and interest in the organization. So it was $2,500 of an ask. And I remember feeling really great about the ask. I remember walking away and thinking, this guy really might give this to us. This guy seemed very positive. He was really nice. He uh, asked a lot of questions. He seemed interested. And I left feeling like, probably gonna get this money. I got a $250 check, which was fabulous, but nowhere near the ask. Just a couple of months ago, I wrote a letter of inquiry to a foundation for a large piece of equipment for a hospital system. And this is a foundation that has no history with this organization. They have not given many dollars in this area, but the thing we were asking for was something that they did want to support, was something that they might support. Had a great conversation with the program officers and submitted the letter of inquiry. If you've ever done a letter of inquiry, you know they don't take a ton of time to put together. And it was worth the hour and a half, two hours that it took to put that information together. Well, that was about six months ago. About two weeks ago, I got a picture message from my client that showed a letter of inquiry acceptance and $150,000 match that we had been granted. So some people might have said, it's not worth your time, you don't have a history with this organization, but we took the right steps, we built the relationship, we submitted it, and it turned out awesome. You will never know if you don't try. Um, I remember once I worked for an organization that had changed insurance companies and the first insurance company had always been a donor. The guy that owned it had always been a donor to the organization at a very high level and I was instructed, don't waste your time on asking him to give again this year because he's not going to because we took business away from him and gave it to another company. Well, I said, if his intentions in giving are pure and he really has an interest in the organization and he has a history with us then the fact that we are not doing business with him might affect his decision to give, but I don't think it will. And so I called him and I went and visited him and I talked with him and I made an ask just like I did every other year and he gave and everybody at the organization was shocked. So I encourage you to try new things, to realize that sometimes you are gonna fall flat on your face and you're probably gonna wear those scars on your sleeve for a little while and be very gun shy about doing those types of things again in the future. But sometimes it's gonna work out. Sometimes it's gonna be great. Sometimes people aren't right when they give you information. You know, somebody said something to me the other day um, that I think it was a coach that they had or an expert in the field that was giving them advice about something and that person was wrong, ended up being wrong. And I said, you know what? Nobody's right 100% of the time, all the time, and that's okay because that's being human. I'm not right about everything all the time, 100% of the time. Um, I tried to give information and advice based on good knowledge, sound advice, experience, things I've learned in the field, things I've learned from other people, but not everything is going to work for everybody all the time. There will be a donor who you take business away from and you go and ask them for a gift and they say no because they're pissed off. It's going to happen. There's going to be donors that you go and ask for a gift that seems reasonable and they're not going to give it to you. And then on the flip side of that, the opposite will happen. You will get unexpected gifts in places you didn't think. You will get more than what you ask for occasionally from people. You'll have foundations that reach out to you and ask you to give money that you never asked for. So I just want you to keep your mind open to learn from your experiences and it's perfectly okay to fail. Everybody fails. That's, not, that's, that's okay. And share those experiences with other people so that they don't have to make the same mistakes. Share your experiences about not doing a Superman over the bed when you're half asleep in the middle of the night and hope that someone else is able to prevent themselves from that. But, you know, I, I wanted to share this with you because a lot of times when I'm talking with other people or when I'm at a conference or when I'm watching an educational video, people are so serious about development work. It's almost like there's no fun in it. And there is, there's a lot of fun. You can joke about things. There's lots of great experiences. It can be exciting and rewarding. And I just don't want people to get into that place where they're like, oh, it's dreadful. I don't want to ask anybody for money. I don't want to have to plan another event. I don't want to have to plan another campaign. And so I add a little humor occasionally. I hope you guys appreciate it. I hope you guys are having a great week. Um, fourth quarter is almost here. I hope people are getting ready for planning uh, 2017. Hope that you've reached all your goals so far for this year and if you haven't i hope you have a great plan for how you're going to and i just wish you all the best as you continue to grow for good and next week we'll have another episode of growing for good so i hope you have a great rest of the week and we'll talk to you next week